Okay, man, go ahead and just introduce yourself to our viewers, man. For sure, man. It's your boy Tay, T A Y Z A, represent native of East St. Louis, Illinois, man. I put it down for my city. Okay, man, thanks for joining us on the show, man. What I'm going to do is I want you to go ahead and, first of all, just bring people up to date your journey, man. So go ahead and explain to us how you got in the industry, what your journey been like up until this point, and bring us up to the present. Okay, it started out about 15 years ago. Um, I ended up getting with a, a group of friends, you know, that was real talented themselves. Uh, they run a label uh, called Can I Live? Uh, Devious, Menace, and Tweed. One of the three guys I went to school with, man. You know how they work at school. You get with people, then all of a sudden stuff roll off on you. I was already musically inclined as well, because I come from a background of, you know what I'm saying, musically inclined, you know, family members and stuff. So it wasn't difficult at all for me to adapt to, you know, this, this the, the music scene, because I was already a part of it. Um, this kind of went past, uh, a couple years passed by when I dropped my first song, titled You Won't Beef. Um, Producer that work at Runner Bros right now is man Lewis Harden actually produced that, that joint. My first joint I ever did, uh, it went stupid hard, you know, and got good reviews off of that, you know. But after that everybody was expecting and waiting for me to, you know, do something else. So, you know, as time passed by, I ended up getting with another underground label called Drastic Measures. Uh, Y'all might know him Devious, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Devious B Smoke, B Stuff, shout out B Stuff fans, man. You know, me and him, we started the label and whatnot, along with a few more other cats called Drastic Measures. It was very successful. Uh, we had a, a, a long run on that. You know, a lot of people, networked with a lot of people on that. Got some good records out of that, you know. Uh, but you know, at some point in time, it's like once you get so far in this, 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 this scene of music, at some point in time, you gotta make a transition to actually become a boss yourself. You know, it's not even becoming a boss, but you know, you gotta become independent at some point in time, you know, in whatever you do. Uh, especially if you know that you have the ambition to do that, you know, to drive to do that. So that's what I did. I started my company, Tay Entertainment. I'm the CEO of it, you feel me? Uh, I ended up going to school for another couple of years to get my business management associate's degree so I can learn how to better run my company. You know, uh, now I got hit records. I have songs on the radio now. I got a hit record out called Look Like We Made It that's doing real well, you know, across the country. Get brought to Chase for that. You know, uh, I just signed a couple of uh, artists to my label as well. One of them is official, his name is Boogie. He real hard, represent East St. Louis. The next one I'm gonna let y'all know about that. Let me give a second there. You know, right now, just doing my thing, man, independently. You know, I'm trying to rack up these royalties. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to do, get these records out here. I got a new album that just came out called uh, Stay Focused. The whole album code from point A to, to B. That's it, that's the whole. The whole thing is spectacular, just a solid project. So um, be on the lookout for that for iTunes as well. Uh, you can reach me at Facebook at Taser CEO, Instagram Taser CEO, YouTube Taser. Okay, what's the, what's the name of the single off that album, man? What's the single? The, name of the, the new single that we got uh, coming off of, we actually got like, like four or five singles off that album. Um, what I'm going to do is actually let the people, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 you know, tell me what they, they want to hear, you know, what they want to see right now. Uh, I currently got three, four videos out right now. Look like we made it, so far gone, and uh, mine made it up. So, and I was doing well as well. Uh, look like we made it, got like 120,000 views in like this first six, eight months type, you know what I'm saying? So, it did real well. Got the radio play 104.1. Shout out 104.1 for playing my record. Tell me the concept around that song, man. The concept, look like we made it, man. Um, you know, it, it's basically, you know, this is not, not to sound like Drake or anything like that, but it's the bottom to the top. You know, this song been out for a year and a half now, so, and it's been doing numbers way before this bottom to the top thing, but the theory of the bottom to the top type thing is what the look like we made it. You know what I'm saying, concept is about, you can graduate high school or college and you made it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, my concept went for me when I first started doing music. Then it was like a transition phase from this level to this level to this level. And what I do is take you through those levels from when I was a little kid on to, to where I am now, you know, I made it. And it's a metaphor, you know, it's not, that don't mean that you're rich and you did all this, you got all of this, these big houses, that don't mean nothing about living like we made it, we made it. That means you woke up this morning and you can breathe now. You made it. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. I just made the transition to the music thing, of course, and I made it apply to my, what my life was. I made it from this music shit from when I was on a label, a small label, you know, and ain't, I ain't have nothing to do with the running of that label to where I'm now, I run the label. I'm the CEO of my company, so. 
Okay, you talk about the independent grind, man. Go ahead and just draw a comparison for me of how you feel that grind is versus to going out here and maybe signing a deal with the major. You know, draw some some comparisons. You know, some some pros and cons that you've seen by by doing what it is that you're doing right now on an independent level versus to going out here and signing with a major label. Well, <clears throat> I mean, most of what I might say, uh, some won't tell you. Actually, most won't tell you. But I ain't gonna sugarcoat the shit, you know what I'm saying? Independent is where it's at. I'm gonna tell you like this. Right now, you can have a CD, you can sell that motherfucker for $9.99. And if you sign to a late, you're only gonna get 10 cents out of every motherfucking CD that you sell. So you do the math on it. Do you want, you want 100,000? Do you want 900, 9 million? That's the difference between the big label and independence. 9 million, 100,000. 100,000 big label, 9 million. You, the money go to you. So that's what it's about. You know, when you politic and you do this and you building your brand and all of that stuff, all of this is under your control. Long story short, if you're independent, you have more control. You got more money. You got more ways to get shit done where it's gonna benefit you. Not the white motherfuckers you never even talk to for six months at a time. That's the difference. Okay, let's talk about the state of the game right now, and we're going to draw it into what you're talking about right now. You know, we understand, you know, everybody out there understands that technology has disrupted the way that consumers consume music, the way that artists take things to the marketplace. You know, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and talk about whether you see that as something positive or negative as far as technology and its impact on the game today, and, and how is it fitting into your overall strategy and plan? Well, you know, right now, um, obviously, we got to say technology has made it a lot, you know what I'm saying, easier for us to get that music out there as an artist for any business, you know, in that matter. Uh, however, you know what I mean, right now you can actually make a Facebook page and become a straight-up celebrity and you haven't did anything in the game. So techno technology can be on our side, it can also work against us as well, you know, but it's according to how we use it. You know, right now, uh, you know, I got a call and somebody wanted me to send them a bio or something like that. I sent them my press feed. It was nothing but a little click of the email and I sent it straight to them. So, I mean, and that's just what it is. For us, uh, you know, the, the, the way the, the game is right now, and you put your music inside of the store, you know, that's just only the first, you know, half of that shit. You know, the other half is actually just like you doing this shit yourself. It, you don't even really got to worry about this, that store money and all of that shit. We worry about the show money. You know what I'm saying? That's where it's at. So you can let that shit stay right there. That's cool. If you draw your fans to that, you can have your own online store and draw and, and send them to motherfuckers there. You know what I'm saying? So that's all. It, that's what it's about. There's a producer right there hitting me up all the time. Fuck me up. You hear more about him. But that's what it's about, man. It's the show, man. All of this stuff inside of the stores, and you know, you getting your, your CDs in in Circus City or Best Buy and all that. That's cool. It's no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you can still do the same thing if you. Do it on iTunes and it's online. You don't have no overhead or anything like that. So for us selling, selling this, the, the, the records and stuff out of the store and shit like that, like buildings and shit like that, pretty, it's, it's obsolete right now if you ask me. Next. Okay, okay, you hit on a very good point there, man. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have you go ahead and just talk about the industry in its current state, man. What do you think about the industry on a national level right now? Uh, currently, man, uh, what I think is at this point in time, we, it, it, it's starting to convert back to where, you know, we left off. I wouldn't say back to the roots of it, but what we left off before it got back as fuck, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think, you know, with, with Kendrick Lamar showing that he can hold it down, you know what I'm saying, lyrically, you know, and still reach those crowds that like to hear that fucked up music, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a real breakthrough right there, you know? And niggas been doing that shit for years. But they get overlooked because, you know, motherfuckers just want to hear booty shaking shit, you know? So it's nice to hear that breath of fresh air with Kendrick Lamar coming in like that, you feel me? With that hot ass heat. And that's what you can expect for that motherfucking album that got tight and stay focused. You gotta expect nothing but hits. And that's it. Anything else is not even hit. Okay, what do you think about the, um, the local game, man? You know, we, we think about St. Louis, East St. Louis, and how it compares to area like the Bay, you know, Atlanta, you know, Houston, New York. You know, where do you think we stand as, as far as infrastructure, support, and then what do you think it's going to take for us to take it to the next level out of this area, man? Well, uh, first and foremost, I think right now for us to uh, sing in St. Louis, the East St. Louis, uh, the scene could get better. You know, I'm from here. No, I ain't going to talk bad. I ain't going to talk bad. Y'all know what it is, though. You know what I'm saying? We need unity. Of course, you feel me? We need everybody to come together and, you know, at the same time, play your own role. 
know your your position. You feel me? If you know you can you can do you can shoot camera uh, uh, pictures better than the next motherfucker. You ain't what's understood needs not to be explained. Go ahead and do that, and your shit will show. You feel me? And if it's like that, this this person cool, then you go ahead and work with them. You know. And, and, and this is the difference between here in, in the Bay and in other areas, you know. When they see us a thorough motherfucker and, you know, they ready to, to do shit, they got their business right, they willing to work with them, you know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if it's down south, with Jeezy, T, I, and them, what. If you own your shit, then you finna be worked with, you know. And it's slightly different from this thing. Because you can actually be on your shit. But the monopoly is so fucked up that even if you own your shit, it's a little cousin or something like that, that this nigga know that they ain't even half as cold as you. They want to push him, you know? This ain't about no truth or no shit. This is about the same fake shit that they talk about with this game. You know? It's rules to this shit, bro. You know? Okay, when you think about, when you think about names out there, man, let's, let's talk about the past, you know? Let's talk about, you know, people that, 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 that have catalogs or brands that have catalogs. Let's talk about things like Wu-Tang. You know, let's talk about people like Ice Cube, like Pop, you know, stuff that Dre them done out here. Do you think those days are over, man, or do you think that that's coming back now to where cats are looking at they, their careers with longevity instead of just dollar signs, man? We're really trying to put together catalogs and stuff like that that outlast them. That's a good question. Um, you know, my grandma always told me and my mama told me as well, you know, what goes around, come around. You know, what they like, the shit come back. You know, it'll come back. It's how potent it's going to come back, you know what I mean? And, and, and I think I'm starting to see, see like a percentage or two of that potency come back. Like I said, I mentioned Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. You know, he's one of those guys that really, you know, can touch me and say some shit, period. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, it's not like no out of this, you know what I'm saying, shit that we don't need to hear type shit. It's actually shit that's supposed to count type shit. And I think it's getting back there, but at the same time, we far from it. But can it get to back to where it was? No, but it can get to where it's hip hop. You know, potency already there. The shit already been revealed already. It's not about getting back to where we was. You know, it's about exploring and, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and exaggerating what it is now. You know, now we gotta do this shit truthfully. Because back then, 30 years ago, when the kind is now, bro, we got a whole different story, a whole different essence, a whole different, you know what I'm saying, shit to touch on. You know, okay. Okay. gotta keep that shit thorough like how they did it back in the day. So that's what it did. Okay, real talk, real talk. Okay, let's talk about some artists out there, man. Go ahead and, and throw me a couple names out there who you feeling, man. If I, if I had to sit with you in the passenger side of your ride, who are you bumping? Underground or? Let's say above, underground and above ground. Go ahead and give me a couple out of each one. Okay, shit. But right now, man, you know what I'm on? I'm riding around to my, to my new joint. Stay focused right now, you feel me? Uh, it's currently out in the streets. Um, besides that, man, I'm fucking with T-Real, man. My little bro, you know what I'm saying? You can check him out. It's really it, real T-Real on, on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm fucking with Gunna, Gunna Bands. You know, represent East St. Louis, you know? Um, B Joe. Then I'm switch to the straight up mainstream shit. You know how that you got Kendrick Lamar. You know what I'm saying? You can probably put you probably put me in that boat as well in a year or two. But for right now, that's what it is. All I'm fucking with is Kendrick Lamar right now, as far as I'm mainstream. Okay, okay. Let's talk about a blast from the past, man. If you could put together your fantasy um, list of collaborators on a song, you know, cats from the past, who would you put on that song, man, and why? Ooh. Man, that's a good ass question because um, I actually was thinking about that the other day. You know? Some came across me. I, I guess it's, it's self-explanatory if you ask me. If, you know, when I say I want to get on the joint with Ti, you know what I'm saying? That's always good, right there. I'm not, I'm not, you know, Kendrick Lamar, bro. That's what I'm saying. I'm only fucking with truth. You know, if it ain't truth, man, I don't see a lot of truth out here right now. You feel me? I gotta think. I gotta think too hard about that. that shit. It ain't, it ain't popping in my head right now. It, it ain't too much truth out here right now. That's all. You know. Okay, okay, okay. Let's talk about future, man. What do you see down in the future for you? If I was to fast forward five years, man, are you messing with films? Are you, are you, are you, are you dealing with some other things? You know, what, what, what is your brand? What is your business look like five years from now, man? Five years from now. I expect to be in a whole different space than where I'm in right now. It's like, it, I can't even imagine. Because I remember what I asked God to bless me with. You know, and I know the energy that I put out there, first of all. So I just went to school, graduated, got my business management associate's degree. Obviously, I'm trying to be a motherfucking boss and know something about what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so with that being said, uh, I expect to be 100 levels from where I am right now. I expect to have my own motherfucking brand just fully, you know what I'm saying, right there for you to see. I expect I expect things other than this music shit to happen. Of course, with the music type shit, I expect to be in the position I am right now, but... Way, like a 
hundred percent, hundred percent, the same person, but hundred percent better. Okay. It's, I can't explain to you what it is. I just it's not a materialistic thing. It's just what it is. I hope to be the same person I am now. That's what I see. It's everything else much bigger. Okay, if you had to look out there in the industry, man, who, who has a blueprint right now that you think is, is worth imitating, man, or at least being inspired by? When I say blueprint, I mean from music to money to passion. Who do you think got the blueprint out there, man? Uh, number one, you know, you got a boss sitting up in front of you, so I'm going to have to say Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? He's, that's, that's the truth for us with the business side of things, man. He, he's so uh, intelligent about the moves that he makes that it's, it's got to be inspiring. Um, and 50 Cent uh, is another one that it's like if you y'all just man y'all stop fucking with the music man just pay attention to the business shit man the business side of it these cats doing dog and I promise you when you get back to this music shit dog it's gonna be so much easier you gonna be like damn I ain't even that movie I know this business movie gonna call it's so stupid bro you just gotta pay attention to the business you pay attention to the business man you gonna know what moves to make for us with your music shit you know what I'm sorry just like that if you have to choose passion or profit which one if you don't have to choose one. Most definitely passion. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now you just said something about Jay-Z and 50 Cent, man. Do you think we'll ever see a billion dollar hip-hop artist or a billion dollar hip-hop brand out there? You know, these guys are reaching the 400, 500 million dollar range now. Do you think we'll ever see one crack a billion dollars, man? A billion? Um, well, I mean, Jay-Z and Beyonce, I'm sure they have cracked it, but solely by itself. Sure, hell yeah, sky's the limit for that. Once you're on that road and you got that, the business is the most important thing. You got the business, the money will come. Okay, two pieces of technology that you can't live without, man. Shit, um... My studio and my phone. Okay, if you had to give words of wisdom to the next person coming behind you, you know, what kind of advice would you give them? Stay ready and you don't have to worry about being ready. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up, man. What I want you to do is go ahead and give you shout outs. Also, again, let everyone know how to get in contact with you, whether it's through your social media platforms or your website. Just go ahead and um, let them know how to get out, get out, get, get in touch with you. For sure. It's your boy Taser, a.k.a. Taser CEO, man. You can reach me on Facebook at Taser CEO, Twitter at Taser CEO. You can reach me on Instagram at Taser CEO, man. You can also go to my website, www.tayentertainment.com, T-A-Y-E-N-T-E-R. A-I-N-M-E-N-T, you already know all one word, tayentertainment.com. You can see all of my latest videos and all of that good shit. Um. Hey, what up, Taze? What up? She got gonna and touch him with a T-N-T. P-N-P. Let go. Let go. Hey, <laughs> this for all my niggas. That be posted at that one stop. All my DJs hey, and all my club owners. Yeah, I need to rock it in. Cop a Kush pack. That's that one stone. Get your chain snatched. That's that one stone. Get your face swole. That's that one stone. Got back, got coke, got free, got mollies on. Let that one stone. Cop a Kush pack. That's that one stone. Get your chain snatched. That's that one stone. Get your face swole. Fresh out the shower, grabbed and fitted in my Nike Air. My nigga called, told me meet him somewhere over there. Somewhere over there, yeah, somewhere over there. Well, it's a go, cool, I'll meet you at that one store. One store, that one store, yeah, bro, that one store. It's Charlie Young, boy, man, now you know the store. It's one in every ghetto hood, bro, around the globe. I grabbed the keys to the Chevy and I'm out the door. Hit me a couple of them cones while I'm smoking troll. I'm up in UGK, cool by her, we don't play. We take the UG out the UGK and pull the K. I rolled up, now I'm in front of that one stove. My big cuz trick trick at that one stove. My cuz low dog posted at that one stove. So that's a couple husband family members at that one stove. Cop a Kush pack, that's that one stone. Get your chain snatched, that's that one stone. Get your face swole, that's that one stone. Got back, got coke, got free, got mollies on, that's that one stone. Cop a Kush pack, 
push back. If that one stole, get your chain snatched. If that one stole, get your face swole. If that one stole, I got my bodies all. If that one stole, bitches know what I be. Posted at that one stole. No, we smoking at that one store. I only fuck with them real niggas. T Dub and my cousin Lee. That man and my next stick for my motherfucker little brother Mike G. On the bitch and I'm on the block. All black and I'm trying to go. I'm in the hoes and I coach hoes. That I'm the shit and you know for sure. Bitch, I got my hater blockers. And you know them haters watching. Double cups and a couple blunts. My chrome wheel with them 12 knocking. Shout out to my A Rabs. My nigga Sam and my nigga B. My nigga Jenny, my nigga Bunny, my nigga Pat.